been made mightier without wood. Leave the X-Men at home, because uh, that new Fantastic Four movie made their success days a future past. This week, we're going to be talking about Chronicle. Chronicle is a 2012 film about superheroes made by Max Landis and Josh Trank. Uh, it was a really cool film that just came out of nowhere for me, and it stars some pretty cool people. Let me see here. It stars Dane DeHaan, Alex Russell, Michael Kelly, Ashley Hinshaw, and Michael B. Jordan of the new Fantastic Four movie. Just... I'm sorry, Michael, you didn't need to see that. But in this movie, three teens are given super telekinesis by an object of unknown origin. Like, that's it. Like, literally. They never even talk about what the object is, where it came from, or what it might be doing here on Earth uh, after its initial exploration. Uh, it could be that it's something that just came up from the center of the Earth. It could be an alien object. We actually don't know. And it's remarkable to see a movie uh, issue that for their origin story in favor of doing something different and focusing on what makes these heroes heroes. And that's probably why I liked it so much. Another thing that Chronicle does beautifully, and I think Max Landis even said it was his goal, was to create the same kind of emotional impact on a much smaller scale. Um, in the fact that he doesn't have to destroy New York or Tokyo or all of the world in order for you to feel like the stakes are raised when the conflict of this movie is at its pinnacle when characters at most <laughs> disrupt a public statue um they break a bus they bust a couple of walls out of a hospital uh probably a couple dozen people injured maybe dead um but <laughs> it's certainly not in the thousands like it was for avengers or for uh Man of Steel, which was just one bit of destruction after the other, odd infinitum. Um, this movie focuses on having a small scale in a town. I can't say it's a city, because it doesn't look quite that big, and it's certainly not a metropolis or Gotham-y type. It's a, a small city, uh, someplace where you can feel right at home. And uh, man, you still feel the impact that if this gets out of hand, you know it can go from this size to this size in a heartbeat. So, does that great. But it didn't focus on that crap because it just didn't matter. What mattered here is the fact that these characters all have the exact same powers gained the same way, putting them all basically in the exact same position as each other. Uh, I can't think of a story that's really done that before. Usually the powers are different for the heroes when they get them all unified, or they've got ridiculously different backstories or ridiculously different lives, but these guys share a lot of things in common. It's just a few small events that change who they are. Like, think about Superman. Like, Superman has stories where we get other Kryptonians, but they're always like General Zod or Superboy or Power Girl. They all led such completely different lives from Clark that, of course, they're not going to turn out like Clark because they were different. They were raised to be warriors or they grew up in the mean starts of L.A. or whatever the hell they're going with for the next Superman knockoff. Or think about Spider-Man and the fact that there's been lots of Spider-Men like 2099 or Spider-Gwen or um, Ben Riley or the Slingers. But again, um, there's only one Peter Parker. Even think about like Miles Morales and the fact that he struggled for a while to fill Peter Parker's void. The fact that he had big shoes to fill because it wasn't just about the powers. It was about the person. And Peter Parker, well, he was just grade A human. Think about Batman. And the fact that we've had dozens of Batman, we've even got a Bat family now, but they all pretty much function the exact same way. Sure, uh, one of them might be a bit more heated than the other, or Azrael might be a bit more vicious than previous people, but Batwoman, Batwing, Bat Robin, Bat Bane, Batman, Bat Batman, you were born wealthy, now I'm also wealthy. Point being, all the family members might be different, but they all just kind of end up being the same Batman, at least in one form or another. It's not the case with Chronicle. Chronicle kicks all that crap to the curb and does something different. The three teens in the story, all male. All decently middle class or above-ish. And they all go to the same high school. So they deal with the same bullies, the same professors, they're the same age, they live in the same city. And that means that they've encountered uh, most of the same events throughout their life, with a few small exceptions. 
Uh, because of that, they start developing their powers in the same way, using minor telekinesis to lift objects that eventually became throwing objects, which eventually led to flight and uh, other projections of their telekinesis on one another. Makes sense, but what shaped them is their trauma. And because of these traumas, their goals fundamentally change, stem to stern. The villain of the story ends up being destructive and violent and hurting people because of his abusive father that has left his mother to suffer, and it's meant that he has become a much darker person, exemplifying what Joker says when he says, all that separates becoming a guy like you and becoming a guy like me is one bad day. And uh, I think this shows it. Chronicle studies what it is to be shaped by your trauma, what it is to have bad events happen to you that makes you into a less than cool person. And it shows that if we do bad to other people, we're going to create bad people. Let's just hope the bad ones aren't the ones that get superpowers. It also shows fundamentally that no matter what powers you gain, uh, your superpowers aren't going to fix everything. They're going to still leave you in the same place and you're going to have to deal with them with human precision. And because of that, even if you gain the ability to fly or shoot lasers from your eyes or the ability to run at supersonic speeds, um, nothing can get rid of the woes that have been inflicted upon you by your parents or people that loved you or your enemies in school or all of the troubles that we have. Those events shape us as people and there's just certain things you can't outrun. So if you've ever wanted to be a super soldier or be bitten by a radioactive spider or be from another planet and gain all of these powers that will fix everything that's wrong in your life, just remember, uh, all your heroes, they're human. And they have to deal with all of their trauma, just like you do. We are shaped by our trauma. And we are the heroes or villains that we choose to be. The director, Max Landis, is brilliant. And he's got a YouTube channel, so you should definitely check him out. He's fantastic. He's done videos on the death of Superman and about how wrestling is about everything but wrestling and tons of other stuff. He's super entertaining, a really swell guy, and I can't wait for him to make more movies. Thanks for sticking with me on Pen Made Mightier. Uh, share the video on Facebook or, you know, with your legion of super friends. Uh, post about it on Reddit in one of any of the superheroes I've read, so I don't care. I'm sure they'd like this video. Uh, follow us on Twitter, talk about it with us on Facebook, or just the comments below. And if not, I still hope I get to see you next week. Thank you for sticking with me on Pen Made Mightier.